Cobain Farm fans. We are out having fun with the TR-86. I guess we'll call this fun. Huh. Oh, trying to peel up some corn that's plastered to the ground. In all reality, this stuff probably started going down with the first big rain at the end of October, first of November in the fall. This section of the field is kind of weird. Like it, in the summer, it's great. But, you know, in the not summer, it's just wet somehow. I don't get it. You know, we have a little bit of sanding stuff here. We can go faster to match the real speed. But most of the time, we're trying to get underneath. Now, I'm going 90 degrees of the rows and trying to get underneath the very tippy top of the plan. I've got the small cut sickle sections on here. And I don't know if they're cutting the stock so much as it's just breaking off for us. However, I think it's good to have the smaller cut style because, okay, we gotta put down the reel to hopefully catch the few ears and how they don't fall out there. And we gotta deadhead it back. Yeah, made the few ruts there as it's, it tries to drain down, but it's, there's a, you say drainage ditch there and the water goes that way, sort of out of this area. And I can see it going downhill, but it's not, obviously didn't do that very well because the water's still sitting there. I probably need like a ditcher that has a big three foot cutting wheel on it to cut a big enough ditch. Oh, to get that out. And we'll deadhead it back. Might as well shut the head off, reset the reel up just a little bit. Don't want it on the ground totally. Haven't ripped too many reel fingers off. It's not a not a quick process, unfortunately. Typically only going a little over a mile an hour, if that. And yep, it's all leaning is this away. Look at the yield monitor. Good thing it's dark. This is what I call corn with minerals, because um, sometimes we're just pulling the stock in uh, with the roots, because I guess this area does well with moisture. The corn doesn't necessarily put down deep roots because it doesn't have to. Everything's right there. All right there. Luckily, I was, somehow, I don't know how, I made it through there and did a pretty decent job, I thought, with the with the corn head without needing the uh, without needing to reel or anything else. But we're poor man's corn reeling it right now. You know, the slip clutch on the auger's holding fine. Um, as long as we can get underneath and pry it up. Now, part of the problem with using the regular corn head is I still have trouble getting underneath this because it's so plastered to the ground. And sometimes when I do, the tips. We'll start digging into the mud. And that doesn't do us uh, much good anyways. Once we get mud on the snout, the corn won't push in. That's when you start needing to put the corn reel on it, but then we don't want to push those big piles of mud into the combine. So, unfortunately, some days it's not it's a lose-lose situation all the way around. And yeah, I know, I've been fighting down corn uh, frequently, yes, yes. Well, you know, last year I guess wasn't my year either, with mom and dad both having surgeries in the fall, and mom getting the coronavirus. Um, so yeah, there's all that fun stuff. Yet again, another way to figure out how to not be first and how to not look the most spectacular. We're out here gathering what we can, and if things go my, uh, let's say to plan, I'm gonna try to have storage set up for ear corn so I can pick, 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 pick like crazy in the fall when it's dry and not have to worry about having anybody come to unload wagons. That, you know, whenever we got a free day, nothing better to do, uh, we can sell those copious amounts of ear corn uh, without uh, any requirements of needing wagons empty. Uh, those few rows were not down as bad. I tried to get as, through as much sort of standing stuff. Oh, yeah, we uh, caught the rotor down there a little bit. We'll take a second, let it speed back up. We start about 810. Usually I've been running 790. Book says we can lose up to 10% and be okay. Sometimes I get all excited running things into the head and, every, and uh, all of a sudden the uh, auger will pull in a big wad. <coughs> oh boy. Yep, all the fun. All the fun. We're going to be ready 
to uh, spray for grasses in the beans that are going here. That'll probably be the only weed problem would be volunteer corn. We'll have some succotash. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. A lot of things not going well here, but uh, I guess we'll share this eh, less than fun farming adventure. Nobody's getting hurt other than maybe our pride. Big piece of humble pie here. Oh yeah. Yep. But now that corn that I showed you in that video a while back, that's still standing. Okay, that's at home. This is a rental field. And uh, oh, I would love to put tile in this section. It's got to figure out. Yep, we got a little slow there, guys. Got to figure out how to work the deal for putting tile in here. Can I get somebody to sign a 10-year lease as the owner if I try to foot the bill for the tile? Because I don't know if the owner would want to, you know, put forth that much that much money. Now this soil might do okay. This is better. I like this dirt better than what we have at home. Because I can chisel, disc, and soil finish it and be done. Saves me a whole pass over tillage at home. A little less clay, maybe a bit more silt, but somehow a heavy enough subsoil that we run into some sections that manage to hold water through the winter very, very well. Well, it's getting dark. We know what we're doing here. We go across the slow, come back uh, with the tops pointing at us. I made Oh, we can count passes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that might have been past ten. Ten passes. There's only like three. I don't know if there's a full four acres here in the middle of the field uh, that suffered from severe wind blow. Now, last year I planted, not last year, last time I planted corn, I typically planted the way we're driving now, which we would call uh, north south because I enter the field from behind me so it just made sense to start there and head to the back and I found out this field is oddly shaped enough that trying to get the most long rows it really doesn't matter which way you go really and yep this very center of the field got attacked by the wind I figured I usually had wind problems coming from that direction because there's the least amount of trees over yonder and well that wind blew down the rows and then you know um, somehow you know fall winter or when it starts getting cold the winds will come more destructively out of the north uh, which when I picked ear corn this was already going this was going down so this wasn't the fact that it was out here all winter it's the fact that it was probably still standing here November 1st and being 30% Okay, we're starting back in for yet another pass. Nick's been helping me run wagons. Take them, we've been taking them singly across the creek. Nobody's dumped one yet, but you know, Nick managed to get his truck stuck. Uh, had to make a shaming video of that for him. The only thing I gotta watch is going where it's standing a little better. I gotta go fast and just pull the ears off. And that's even going in pretty good. We got it just right. Ah, well, that's not good. Well, we can reverse the head a little bit. Try to clear out the feeder house. We tried to plug it. We're only a few passes away from being done. Oh, let's burn some clutch at a lower RPM and listen to it beep. Well, that's not a good way to end things. What can we do down here? Give us a cab light. We're gonna go full open on the rotors. Remember about eight, we're gonna open this mess all the way up. Hope I don't have to do anything else. 
Ah, that's what I get for trying to go fast to that standing corn. You can see through the light or darkness. Sun's going down, so we're sucking up moisture into the stalks. Now, rotors are wide open there. Don't need ground speed right now. I don't want to do this with too much RPM. That's how we found out the threshing clutch is good, because it'll bog down the engine. That's probably plenty of speed. That's not doing it. You have to find a big wrench. Well, oh, well, I guess we're gonna call today. Dig this out tomorrow in the daylight.